Hi there, I'm Mark Bosco, the video producer here at the Omni Group, and with me today is Andrea McVitie, our UX designer. <laughs> and uh, today we're going to be showing you how to like you know go from paper sketches into Omni Graffle and creating kind of a, a mid-fi level uh, user flow. That's the right term, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. I like to call them user flows. All right. Um, so I, I know you have um, some sketches, and we'll get to those mm -hmm. in a second, but I just want to let people know that if you go to omnigraffle.com, uh, you can download the free trial of Omnigraffle uh, and follow along if you want. Um, and also, this video will be posted on our website later today, so you can rewatch it here on Facebook, watch it on our website, wherever you like. Um, we're going to be answering questions here in the Facebook chat room uh, while we're live, but if you have any questions later, you can send them to omnigraffle at omnigroup.com, and our support humans will be able to help you out. Um, so, you have uh, some sketches, so let's let's yeah. show those, and you can tell us a little about what we're going to be doing. Okay, so what you're looking at is a photo of my actual sketchbook. I always like to start on paper when I have a, a rough idea, just sort of play with things. Um, and what I've done for this demo is I've come up with a concept app. This is a basic neighborhood mapping app, except this is targeted at fairy tale wolves who are particularly interested in structural engineering. <laughs> okay. So what have what we got here, the, the screens that we're going to be OK, going so through. this is, and, and you'll notice these are really rough. This is how I work in my sketchbook just to get ideas out. Um, so the first one you're looking at, it's, I actually labeled that one. I occasionally do that in my sketchbook. Uh, it's just a basic login screen. And you'll see a lot of boxes with Xs in them when I sketch. Um, that's just my own personal shorthand. That means there's an image here or a, a logo or some sort of asset that goes in here that I'm just sort of roughly getting ideas out. You'll notice there's no like labels on the login fields or anything. It's just sort of working out uh, roughly how might a user work through the main flow of this sure. app. OK. And then since it's a mapping app, once once the wolf has logged in, I've sketched out a, a map. Again, I'm not going to uh, draw a very, very detailed map when I'm just toying with ideas. So okay. uh, shorthand with a few uh, tab navigation at the bottom. Um, and then from there, if you want to, if you're a wolf who's mapping their neighborhood, you want to add a location. I've drawn in little bits and pieces of info, like an address, uh, what material is the building made out of, like bricks or straw or sticks, uh, wind resistance, because wolves are very into structural engineering. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a uh, checkbox there for whether there's a grandmother on the premises, also interesting for wolves. <laughs> Uh, and a huntsman score, and you'll see some buttons stuck down in there. And this is this isn't even necessarily you know proper iOS form in some of these sketches. It's just quick, get get little notes and ideas out of roughly what I would need. So it's n it's not obviously pixel perfect. Sure, but it's, sure. it's just sort of my own note taking and shorthand. Okay. Um, and then we we move on. Okay, once you add a house, there's a house on the map. Mm -hmm. um, in this sketch, I have a little doodle of a popover, and and then the again the little tab bar at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then uh, another feature I thought would be useful was filtering your map, just like most other neighborhood filter or mapping apps. Uh, so you can do things like narrow down the radius, uh, which housing materials you want to be able to see, uh, wind resistance, the ground, all of those data points that the wolf would have added about the location. Mm -hmm. uh, and then from there, they would once they apply the filter, they would move on to a filtered map view. Okay. And then. That little, little bottom screen is a detailed view. So if you're looking at an already mapped house, it would bring up information. And maybe there's, you see I'm toying with some other rating systems and different different presentations. So the, the app evolves even when I'm just sketching it out. And then <laughs> down, the, down the side are just uh, me toying with possible icons for this app. <laughs> I love those icon ideas. <laughs> I did enjoy those. Very cool. Um, so. Uh, why don't you take us through what's now that you've you've kind of sketched this out? You've mm -hmm. got a basic idea of, of what this iOS app is going to be. Mm -hmm. What's the first step in getting it into OmniGraffle? Okay, so once I have a, a really rough idea, so you saw that those were really rough. I'm going to want to shop it around to team members or wolves to see what they think. Mm -hmm. I need it in a form that someone else can read. I don't expect people to be able to understand my Great. sketches. They're just for me mostly. Gotcha. Uh, so I move into OmniGraffle pretty early on still, but I'm going to keep it a little rough. Okay. Um, I have prepped for myself an iOS uh, artboard enabled template already, which sets my document up for me. So okay. you get this, you get your little phone frame. Okay. Uh, and it's got a, an artboard that's the size of a, one of the standard phones. I don't remember which one, probably Nessie. Mm -hmm. 
um, and a built-in status bar, and a tab bar, so it just sort of gets me set up quickly. And if, you, if there are things that you do over and over again to set up your documents, you can make your own templates. It makes it a lot quicker. OK. Uh, so that first screen um, is going to use some pretty basic pieces. And because I use those basic pieces over and over again, I've made myself some stencils, mm -hmm. which is appropriately called frequently used stuff. <laughs> So I'm going to drag in my little scribbly box here. On paper, I use those big X boxes. In Graffle, I tend to use the scribble fill for just shorthand of this is where an image would be. This gives it a little visual weight without worrying about the exact photo or the exact logo that I'm going to put in there, just a placeholder. OK. So I might even label it logo or branding or whatever your, your favorite term is. Do you want to maybe take the OmniGraffle document full screen? We'll have a little more oh, yeah. space to. Yep, working show on my laptop. So that's a little tight. On. Yeah. So drop the logo in. Okay. And I also, because I use them over again, have prepped a basic iOS login so that I can just drag it in. I don't need to remake it over and over and over again. Okay. Giant time saver if you have things like that. And uh, this screen is just all standard stock parts, if you will. I also have a nice, happy, attractive blue button. I tend to use blue in my early mockups. It draws visual attention. It's, you know, it looks, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't look permanent. It's just this is a stand in for this should be visually interesting. I like that the button says go. Right <laughs> <of all that. laughs> Placeholder text, yeah. Um, for this, we're going to use login. Mm -hmm. So we have our first screen mostly out. Oh, there's a tab bar in there. We're not going to need that yet. Mm -hmm. I'll just stash it over there for, for now. Uh, something I didn't include in my sketch, but I'm, it was occurring to me as I'm working. Uh, it's great if you have a login name already, but if you are a wolf who has never used the service, mm -hmm. you're going to need a sign up option. So I just copy and paste button. I'm going to change the fill because it doesn't need to be quite so uh, in your face. Right. <laughs> it's the it's the secondary option. Get out of that blue. Yes, I use the colored pencils. I like them. I don't need bespoke colors for this. It's just uh, get the idea down and and start getting feedback on it. And we'll swap out our text. Too. I like those. I kind of miss the crayons though. <laughs> but. <laughs> uh, and and one thing you'll notice here is uh, Andrea's making it so that it's, you know, it's got kind of like a handwritten like font to it. It's, you know, the the scribbles in, in place of the images and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and, and that was something you told me before that it's, you don't want to have it super, you know, you don't want it to be pixel perfect. Yeah, yeah. Um, when you're just moving out of the sketch stage, you don't want to spend a ton of time getting just the right colors and the exact layout and the exact, um, you know, pictures you're going to use or anything. You're going to mm -hmm. move into that stuff, but early on you want to encourage people to give you feedback or right. uh, encourage yourself to give yourself feedback. So if you're spending all your time on the tiny details, you're not um, you're not as likely, I guess, to, to sort of um, iterate on your work, and, and it burns up a lot of time. And what you really want to do is get right. out the, the user flow of the app first and then start worrying about the details. And this way, when you show uh, a client or a team member the thing, it doesn't look finished. Like right. They're, they're like, okay, this is this is still a work in progress. We can still talk about this. And if it's too pretty, sometimes pretty will hide a lot of uh, <laughs> user experience problems. So yeah. you know, you you look at it, and you're like, oh, this looks really great. This is very exciting, but it doesn't flow right. And this this right. will help bring out those those problems. Right. And it's at it's still an early stage. You want to encourage discussion. Yes. And yeah. also. Uh, <laughs> And you've said, and some other designer friends of mine have said too, like you show something that looks pixel perfect, people assume, oh, it's done, ship it. Yes, it's yes. Like, no, there's no app yet. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we want to keep uh, it looking. I've definitely had sketchy. that come up in, in client work that, oh, it looks finished. Let's let's do this next yeah. week. No, no, no. <laughs> this is early. But that's one good thing. OmniGraffle has the like kind of the marker and, and scribble fills mm -hmm. and the sketch outlines. Uh, you can mm -hmm. make it look 
kind of like it's hand drawn, um, but you know, still presentable. Yeah, it still gives you the idea. Um, and and it's just a style. So even if you want to move forward later with this and try and make something that's you know a, a higher res mm -hmm. uh, mockup, that you know you can actually just change the style and keep working with the same elements yeah. you've been working with. Yeah, I so. convert a lot of my documents. I bring in the sketchy one and and then sort of upgrade it to a pixel perfect. And and for some uh, things I'm working on, I do start at a higher fi setup, but since this is so early idea and not just sort of a mild change, yeah. it's good to, to keep it a little scribbly. Uh, there was a question in the chat room. How, oh. did, how did you copy and paste that button? Uh, oh, uh, I just selected it and Command-C and then Command-V. And if you click on the canvas, it'll drop it Oh, maybe we can, close. Uh, I think we had a little... Uh, oh. Hmm. Well, we, we were trying to use uh, mouse pose to show the keystrokes and... We're not seeing them at the moment for uh, whatever reason, but. Well, it's on. <laughs> um, I oh, apologize. Well. It's a live show. Yes. Anything can happen. We'll keep moving. <laughs> um, yes, if there are questions about things I'm doing, uh, I will try to tell you. Uh, the strange thing is some of this becomes muscle memory. So <laughs> as best as I can, I will remember what I'm pressing. Um, but if I can't help you, our support people are fantastic, and our documentation is really great. So. Yep. Uh, so we have a login screen. Um, since I didn't sketch up the sign-up process, I'm going to want to come back to that later. I'm okay. not going to get distracted with a whole other side thing. So what I like to do when I come into something like that is leave myself a note. And I have a text style I like for this, so I have a stencil for that too. You could you could do this lots of other ways. And I this is a tip from my friendly. I always start all my notes to myself with two asterisks, which means I can search the document later and okay. find all the open questions for myself, for the team members, whatever, so they don't get lost in the uh, mix. If you have a very, very large document, sometimes it's easy to overlook stuff. Okay. So sign up process TBD. To be decided. Oh. And I'll just put that over there. And I might also put my favorite little ooh, little bracket. I snagged this out of someone else's stencil set. I apologize. I don't remember which one it was <laughs> on Stencil Town. Um, it is a thing that I like. It's nice and graceful. So I stuck it in with my custom stencils so I can use it over and over again. There. So now I've left myself a note. Come back to this figure out that part later, because it's not the most important piece. Okay. So we're going to move on to our next screen. Mm -hmm. uh, to do that, I'm going to select my artboard here and option drag out a copy. Uh, the cool thing is it will keep the artboards on the artboard layer, mm -hmm. everything else on its own layer when I do that. Yeah, and that's uh, a new thing in OmniGraph 7 uh, whenever you do duplicate something. So if you hold down option and drag, that'll duplicate, and you get everything everything that you've selected is duplicated right next to it on the layer that it, the original was on. Um, if you wanted to copy and paste into a new layer, you would copy and paste. <laughs> copy, select the new layer, and paste into that, and then everything would go into that new layer. So that's a subtle difference between duplicate and copy and paste. Um, there is a, a question. Uh, how do you search your notes in OmniGraphle? Oh, uh, let's see. It is edit. Do, do, do. I haven't done it in a while, so I have to think about it. <laughs> yeah, find. And it will find the string in the thing, and you can uh, so. right click and scroll to selection mm -hmm. to find the thing if it was off screen. Um, and then you can just move through each of those. And if I didn't say that as a tip I got from my friend Lee, who's awesome, she's also mm -hmm. a UX designer. So steal it, it's a great idea. Very cool. <laughs> Um, where were we? Oh, yeah, map. So we're going on the map screen mm -hmm. once you log in. Again, I'm not going to draw a very detailed map for this sketch. That would take forever. Sure, and, yeah. and it's not, uh, not in my skill set. So for a less distracting image, I have this other stencil I use a lot. And this is just a square with a very light marker fill that I like to use for this. Bring my tab bar up front. Okay. Um, as a stand-in for the map, label it, mm -hmm. um, so that yeah you get the idea without having to go detailed. And then we need some navigation, 
And this, again, ahead of time, so you don't have to watch me draw all these little icons. I made a stencil for this wolf app specifically to bring in, you can get a little look. These are gonna be our, our navigation icons. So we've got a plus to add things to the map, like okay. we saw in the sketches. Yep. Uh, this little, little funnel-ish funnel thing yeah. is the filter. Uh, and here's your uh, user account nice. thing with the, the silhouette of a, of a fairy tale wolf. For the wolves that will be yes. using the app. Hopefully. <laughs> this could be a blockbuster on our hands. You never know. <laughs> um, so that's all there is to that screen. Okay. We've got two. Uh, and because this is a user flow and I want to demonstrate to the team or whoever I'm pitching to how someone's moving through the app. Right. I'm going to go grab my line tool and then connect that button to the next artboard. Say, okay, if you click this, this is where you go. You can you can use a more subtle style than this. I happen to like this big chunky mm -hmm. one when I'm working in this sort of sketchy whiteboard it's style. Easy to see on this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The easy to see is is sort of the key of how do you move through the app. Yeah. Without getting caught up in in colors and details and things. And I noticed you're using like just kind of like black and white and just that that blue. Mm -hmm. Uh, accent color is that it's an, an, another way that you're kind of showing that the app isn't fully formed yet. Yeah, so. yeah. This is this is sort of my own preferred color palette. It's, it's like a blueprint kind of, right? Um, ah, okay. It it should still look like a whiteboard drawing. It shouldn't be. Uh, I I don't want to spend a lot of time picking colors if we're working on a feature that's that's just not going to work out and we need something else. Or right. when you're discussing ideas, you don't want to get sidetracked about. Um, someone doesn't like orange or someone doesn't like this particular right. shade. So yeah. I stick to a very simple palette until we're starting to get into uh, the visual design. So this is really just about um, the the sort of wireframe bits just of it. Working yeah. out the ideas. And... Yeah, so okay. it's, it's not particularly colorful or whatever. It's a very early stage. Gotcha. Sort of uh, boiling the ideas down to the minimal amount of visual information first just to get that, that uh, user flow through the app. Okay. Uh, let's see. So after you have a map screen, you notice there's nothing on the map, so mm -hmm. we'll want something on our map. I'm going to, again, grab a copy of this screen and option drag it out. Cut that arrow for now because we don't need it. Okay. Now this screen is going to be a little heavier duty. If you're going to add information... Oh. I've got buttons that stick on my Wacom <laughs> on occasion. <laughs> Apologies. It's uh, it's well loved. I love this thing, but I've certainly put mileage on it. Um, I'm I'm checking my sketches here. Oh right, add location. Oh yeah, we, uh, we should show the uh, the original sketch yeah. there to get an idea. Yeah, so what you see there is it, the sort of information you'd want to add for uh, marking a house on a map. Okay. This, uh, since it's a standard form, sort of, anyway, in fairy tale mm. world, standard form, I've got some bits and pieces that I've built ahead of time. Okay. Including, this should look relatively familiar. This is just a, a standard, you know, address form. Okay. We'll also need, since this is a, a, a sheet, I think, technical terms, iOS technical terms, <laughs> uh, we'll need some navigation to get in and out of this. Okay. And that's also something I use over and over again, so I have built. Generally, the thing I'm pulling out of frequently used stuff is stuff I've said, okay, I use this 900 times, I need to just mm -hmm. build one. Right. So, it's gonna pop up, so get rid of that. Make that cancel. Add location. There, now we have a way in and out of the screen mm -hmm. and a way to add an address for okay. your, your wolfy mapping needs. Uh, more information that we were interested in is the material of the house. So dig around in my UI chunk option because I think one of the standards will be useful. I think we will use this little table guy. And for example house, we'll say it's um, sticks. Yeah. Okay. 
So then this would be a drill down, and I might leave myself a note here to remember to come back and and flush out the, the drill down options and things if I think it's necessary. Some things, if you're familiar with the UI, you don't need a detail for everybody on the team, but if it's, sure. you know. Yeah. I mean, I might at least want to tell the team, these are the options I think that should be here. Yeah. Straw, sticks, bricks, other. <laughs> there might be user-generated options at some yeah. point. Yeah, for a, for a point release, we might want to open it up for... Stucco. Stucco aficionado <laughs> wolves, our thing, I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Yeah, so we have material, we have an address. You will also want, and I made a little custom thingy ahead of time so you don't have to watch me draw, wind resistance. And I thought uh, a slider would be fun for this. Okay, so if they have to huff, puff, or blow? Yep. Uh, yeah, and I think here. Oh, not hug. You could <laughs> hug the building down. So a little slider piece that you can set the uh, the wind resistance or suspected wind resistance of the building. All right. Uh, something else that we think wolves might want to note. Whether there are grandmothers or grandfathers or whatever, elderly residents will be open to, okay. to everybody <laughs> that are possibly on the premises. Excellent. And wolves might want to give them a rating. Okay. So I've gone ahead and made a little rating system ahead of time. Maybe you want to rate how good the cookies are this particular <laughs> grandmother makes. Okay, excellent. So this would be your standard, uh, if you've shopped at one of the big bookstores down the street online, they have a little star thing, basically that, but cookies. <laughs> Four cookies. Yes, and this is a little small for tap target, so we'll go ahead and make the bigger. Now you notice I'm running out of room because this is a longer screen than right. standard. Um, that's no big deal. Just grab my artboard and drag it out. I might. So how do you? Yeah, when you're when you're designing a, a screen that has to scroll like that, mm -hmm. how do you? Is it you just do it as long as it is, and you need to you you just. You don't need to worry about where the fold is, where the or, fold is. or do you need to worry about that now? Um, for mobile apps, I don't worry so much about the fold. So I used to do web design for years and years, and, and everyone was very worried about getting everything above the fold, or at least all the important stuff. Um, right. I think users are very used to scrolling now, and they get some indication that they need to. I do at least try to look at where the, the fold hits, because if it's running across, say, uh, this gap, right here, that's approximately where it was. Um, I might leave this line here just to remind myself, like this is where it hits, and it, this looks like a clean cut, right? You might not know it needs to go. So I might right. change the layout a bit so that it would fall more like here, so you know there's something more. Yeah, when you can see like a little piece of the next element that gives you kind of a visual idea yeah. that there's yeah. something more. Yeah. Uh, I see. I call that sprouting sometimes, or maybe I just call that sprouting. Huh. Okay. <laughs> I think that might be a meism, but I did not know that. It's based on a euchre thing my brother told me. It's a <laughs> never mind. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I might note where the page cuts off. Uh -huh. We've got elderly residents. Something uh, I also scribbled a notebook that wolves of the fairy tale nature might be interested in was woodsman level of the neighborhood. Okay. <laughs> this could be of interest. To your standard fairy tale wolves. Potential danger? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they just appreciate, you know, forestry. <laughs> so, again, I have. Oh, see what I did? I got working on did my. Uh, ah, put it on the artboard layer. Yep. So it lost its uh, styling, but uh, you just drag it back yeah. out and it's got its styling back right there. So I, I could have. Uh, oh, what did I do? There we go. I ungrouped it with something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably have a stuck modifier key going on. Oh, on your uh, your tablet. Yeah. Too many cookie crumbs. No worries. There we go. So you Excellent. have your rating. So this would fill out. Uh, the sorts of information that a wolf might want to record. Mm -hmm. So we have our, our info screen. Okay. 
And again, I'm gonna go back and record how you get from here to there. And I'm gonna stick it to the artboard so that this is fun. So if you grab this, the arrow comes along so you can lay this all out later. Right. I tend to get everything down and then rearrange it so that there's some method to the madness once I, I clean up my files once I'm gonna show them to someone. So you see the sort of chaos here <laughs> down right. the side. <laughs> Lots of people are very good at keeping their files organized ahead of time. I like to just do it after I've, I've built things right. up. Kind so, of keep the creative process flowing yeah, and then, yeah. then we'll clean it up once that's uh, a little more solidified. Yep, that's how I bake to <laughs> clean up later. Um, but you know, it's like once you drag the artboard to all of the things that were on top of the artboard come with yeah. it. Um, if you haven't learned about artboards yet, you can go see yesterday's video that we did with Dan. We did a deep dive into artboards and super learn, helpful. learn all about the, uh, the, the superpowers that artboards have. <laughs> um, let's see, so we're gonna move on from our add location screen once you've added a location. Mm -hmm. It's gonna bring you back to the map. So I'm gonna grab a map screen again so I don't have to redo that whole thing. And just option drag to yep. duplicate it. Again, okay. this is another option drag. Clean up the arrows I don't need. Sorry, I'll zoom back in in a minute. I know <laughs> it gets really tiny, but there we go. And again, just gonna draw an arrow from how you got there. Okay. a little farther away, so I've got room. Ooh. I accidentally see it stuck to the artboard because I overlapped, that line's a little big. All right, we've added a house to a map, so we need to add a house. Oh, I've even got the shape selected. Nice. That was convenient. <laughs> I was doodling something with it the other day. It's not my normal <laughs> default, but. <laughs> and I'm gonna go in to keep with our styling Lots of fun fills. I like the squiggle. Your mileage may vary. And I always put my squiggles at a 45 degree angle. There, so we have a house on our map. Wolf has successfully mapped their house. Cool. Well, someone's house. <laughs> uh, checking out my sketches again. Let's see where we're at. Uh, another, another chunk of the app we need to explore is this filtering button down at the bottom. Right. So that's another uh, data entry screen. I'm going to grab a copy of this one so that we don't have to start from scratch. It's got so much stuff on it. I don't want to redo the whole thing. I'm going to clean that cutoff mm -hmm. line since I don't really need it for this. Okay. Okay, so filtering. Gonna be similar. Change your title. Let's call it apply filter. Instead of done, change that to apply. So when you're done picking and choosing. Okay. Um, it's doubtful that anyone's gonna filter by an address. That's that's search, right? That's not really <laughs> right. filtering down. So I'm gonna A check too that. Specific. Yeah, yeah. But I think uh, the sketches mentioned doing a radius. Search, so uh, proximity. Right, how close is it to me yeah. right now? Right. Um, and we'll say uh, five miles is maybe a preset. Maybe we have a, a few set options. Sure. Uh, now miles only works if you're in you know, the US that uses our crazy system. Right. So this might be a good place for now. I might want to think about how someone switches back and forth. Um, but since that's part, not yeah. part of the main flow, this is probably a good place to leave myself another note. Right, so our, our neighbor wolves to the north can yes. uh, use this later on. Yep. Uh, kilometers, miles, picking, TBD. I don't always use TBD, but it seems to be handy today. And again, something I can search for later and find it and, and follow up so that you don't have to try to think about the whole app all at once. That can be really overwhelming, even for a relatively small app like that. Right. Okay, so we have materials, and for filtering, I don't think this should be a one choice thing that seems too restricted. You want, uh, maybe you want a challenge and you only want bricks and straw, or maybe you're looking right. for the easier ones that are <laughs> straw I, I, and I sticks. I always play on easy mode. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> 
So we'll need the easy mode picker. <laughs> I'm going to dig around in my pre-made goodies and grab this group table. So I think that will, will work. I have one with a... Hmm. No, I don't. Okay. Don't worry about it. And since this is a little hard to read, it needs a background. Um, if you notice, my inspectors look a tiny bit different. I have rearranged them from the default set to work for me. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't have shadow in here because it doesn't uh, come up much. So I just tore it out. Um, and I've put alignment up to the top because that's something that I use constantly for the type of work I do. So I, yeah. I can just use my scroll wheel and, and there it is. And you can so, actually just like grab the, the title on those and drag them up and down and reorder yeah. them however you like. Yeah, whatever works for you. Um, is, and there's a, actually a cool another cool feature is if you option click on one of the titles, it just keeps that one open and collapses all the others. I keep forgetting so that's like... a thing. Someone, <laughs> someone taught me that recently, and I was so excited. <laughs> it's a big app. There's a lot of goodies in there. Yep. Uh, so we have this group table. It's going to be building material. Okay. I think those titles are actually supposed to be all caps, aren't they? But it's a sketch. Right. <laughs> So straw, we'll fix it in post. <laughs> yes, <laughs> sticks, bricks, and maybe we want to allow other for that stucco wolf fan out there. Okay. So a few filtering options, and there should be things you can just tap on. So we'll need a check mark um, instead of drawing one painstakingly, lovingly drawing a. Check mark. I like to use character panel. Yes, you can put emojis in OmniGraffle. Sweet. It's pretty cool to have a unicorn in your mockup if you need it. Uh, for this, I happen to use check marks. Quite a, yes, you can see. I all like the that the unicorn is right, right there below the. I uh, I do like me some unicorns. So I'm gonna make that a little bigger. So yeah, you can drop special characters into your mock-up. Sometimes that's a handy thing. Okay. Very cool. So yeah, so it's not not just a, a single selection. You can make multiple sections if you wanted straw and bricks or straw. And, yeah. yeah. So we'll put this on your easy mode of only straw and bricks. I'm gonna group those together <laughs> so that I'm not. Yeah, I'm not up to bricks today. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, wind resistance, we have a cool little slider for setting it, but for filtering, maybe we need a similar setup. So I'm gonna toss him over there and probably just reuse this piece for now. And again, maybe another UI element would be more appropriate in case someone's sitting in the back going, oh, but what a, hey, this is just getting the idea out and then we'll iterate on it. Yep. So, wind resistance, puff. Puff, <laughs> low, and uh, there is no other for that. All right. Uh, cookies, let's see. Let me set those over here. I think, yeah, oh, I think I want so. uh, to be able to pick like at least four star cookies, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pull the hatchets out of here. Somehow I grouped them with something. It happens. There we go. So you want only four star and up cookies. That seems yep. like a good, yeah. good cookie cookie bar to set. <laughs> mm, cookie bars. So I'm gonna use <laughs> this thing again. Oh man, my grandmother made the best apricot cookie bars. Those are so. That sounds man, amazing. I haven't made those in forever. <laughs> I have to make <laughs> those now. You better bring them in. <laughs> I want to know. All right. I'm gonna. Check out that label because I'm going to use one in there. <laughs> now this piece is a table, so I've got to shorten it up a little bit. There we go. All right. And I'm going to use the same cookies. I'll just scale them down a little bit. There you go. Now we are filtering for your four cookies or more option. Excellent. 
I think we'll give the woodsman level a similar treatment. Okay. Except I feel like maybe wolves aren't looking for this bar or up on woodsman. Yeah, maybe, maybe two hatchets or fewer. Yeah. <laughs> I have all sorts of things level, layered in here now. This is why you should clean your documents up as you go. Don't be like me, kids. But yeah, everybody works in different ways. Yes. I know some yeah. people like want to work and like are very specific about making sure that everything's on the exact right layer as they're building it. Mm -hmm. Their files um, are great to work with if you need to yeah. look at them. I'm I, I do that a lot. Uh, in After Effects, where I'm, I think I'm more like you, where it's I build a whole bunch of crap and then I group it and make sense out of it later. Mm, we're a little, <laughs> a little small there, but again, it's a sketch. Doesn't have to be perfect right now, right? Mm -hmm. That's up, you know, I'm a designer, I gotta keep fiddling even though it's this ridiculous thing. <laughs> so this many hatchets or less. Yes. So we have a, a, a good way to filter the information on the map. Okay. Oh, let me put that, no, I don't wanna get rid of that. So we've got, I'm just gonna show your uh, notebook. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got your uh, filtering, all the radius, material, wind resistance, all of that is all in there now. Um, so now we're gonna, go and show you what the results are after you filter something. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go back to a map screen, as mm -hmm. we saw in the sketch. So I'm just going to grab another one, because a lot, a lot of apps you use similar screens over and over again, so you can save yourself time, or websites. Right. Um, really, anything that you're kind of u uh, showing the, the use through them, you're going to use the same elements over and over again. Right. Which is a little different from if you're used to doing like flowcharts and that sort of thing. You might, there might be a loop back to the same process or decision point over and over. Here we're making a copy of that because when you see it again, it's different. It's changed. We've added a house or we filtered the results that are coming back. Yeah, it's important to show the different states. So yeah. I'll just scatter a few houses around here. That gives you your, your filtered view. Okay. And I should, again, put my little line in from the button that got you here mm -hmm. to that artboard. Run my arrow somewhere, not through the text. <laughs> Map screen, filtered mm -hmm. view, great. Uh, looking at my sketchbook real quick. Oh, that's right. Um, so you're looking at map, you have a filtered view, and now you want information about one of these residences. Gotcha. So I'm going to go back and grab the add location screen because it's got all that resident information on it. And drag out a copy. Option drag it over. Yeah. Oh, I think I grabbed some. I grabbed something extra in my uh, oh, from efforts the there. Yep. The artboard grabbed it. Yep. Just put that back. Right now. Okay, clean up all those arrows. Right. So if I'm a wolf and I'm looking at a specific location, probably right. want that. So this is like if we tapped on one of those houses. Yeah. This is where we get the detail view here. This isn't the actual <laughs> chevron back, but for this, I'll use that. Uh, maybe show a title here. So we'll use an address for this particular uh, that. <laughs> Actually, that's got an extra get rid of that one. Green Lane. Seattle? Yeah, Is sure. Green Lane, Portland? It might. <laughs> Not going to get into a Portland Seattle feud, man. I know. <laughs> Plus, I don't know what the zip code is there. Oh. Good food, though. I know some of the folks who work on Grip and they're based out of Portland. So ah. that's <laughs> That's my name drop for the day. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so 
It's all right. We'll let it slide. Okay. <laughs> so, oh, it's got a little navigation arrow in there that wouldn't be in the actual info display address of the location. Mm -hmm. And maybe for a point release, we want to add mapping or something, you know, that could be added on. Mm -hmm. this, that might be another good note to leave yourself for a later version and consider. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you need material listed. Wind resistance shouldn't be a slider here since we're looking at a, a house that has already been logged. So I'm going to go and instead show this as a little wind resistance meter. A little bar graph. Guy. Yeah. Uh, let's pick a nice kind of warning orange because it's moderate. Mm -hmm. And I can't help myself. I'm going to use one of the fun fills. So let's go with marker. There we go. That looks that looks like a you know moderate challenge now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That up. Uh, show the cookie rating. Show the woodsman rating. Mm -hmm. Shorten that artboard up a little bit. And again, I'm gonna grab my line tool mm -hmm. and just oh, <laughs> I stuck it to something. There we go. Stick it to the correct artboard. So within a relatively short period of time, especially if you prep some of the pieces you use over and over again, mm -hmm. you can map out a very basic app and give yourself sort of a, a, a map through the use case. And now I would go back and I'd start checking, well, how's the sign-up process work? Or, um, where, you know, what are, the, what are the error screens look like? Things like that. Start yeah. exploring those, those um, sort of tendrils of things that come back off of right. it. But this gives us... Yeah, you can see, even though, I mean, we're, you've been able to do this really quickly mm -hmm. in OmniGraffle, but there's a, just a lot of thought, a lot of work that has to go into planning out this app, even yeah. just for an app that's this small. Yeah, that's relatively small. There's still a lot of things. But this process of drawing it out and sort of walking through all the steps is mm -hmm. how you find problems before someone has coded it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't like to make developers' lives difficult. I like to make them easier. So let's think about the problems. And, and this is a great way to shop around your ideas. Take it to your local fairy tale wolf reading book club or something and shop around and say, you know, would this work for <laughs> you? See what they say. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm not a fairy tale wolf. I should talk to someone who is and see if this if this is serving their needs or if they need um, a different rating than cookies. Maybe they <laughs> need some other information about the local grandmother population or a uh, number of, of picnicking, you know, little red riding hoods in the area or, or whatever is <laughs> whatever is appropriate for the needs. The only way you find out is asking your users. And this is a really good way to start doing that before you've coded anything, before you've invested the time in um, beautiful graphics or photography or whatever you need just mm -hmm. to get your ideas um, off of your very scribbly notebook, which I enjoy and I think is important to the process, right. but something that you can share easily. And, the, and since you're using the artboards in Onyx Gravel Seven, there's definitely you can you know use those to export. Um, for you know, there are a number of different ways that you can you know get those exported screens into kind of a demo form. Yeah, uh, yeah. on an actual device, or you know get mm -hmm. people to test it. So that's yeah. When I when I clean up, sorry, when I clean up my uh, files, I quite often grab all of those arrows and put them on a different layer. Mm -hmm. So I can shut it off when I don't need quite as much visual noise and you can choose not to export uh, that chunk. You can either put them under the artboard and they won't export mm -hmm. or if you need them over top, uh, shut off the, the print um, printing layer thing, this thing. Yeah, that, that one, thing. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. So you can, you can, yeah, just have, uh, you make paper prototypes very easily that way so that you can sort of um, test your navigation. You set down the first screen and ask someone, you know, where would you click to go? Okay, now you see this. And it, it's a great uh, cheap way to start getting informed of user feedback very early on before you've touched any code or, or, uh, or built graphics in OmniGraffle or thing. But yeah, I like to start my ideas here. I love to do high definition things in OmniGraffle too. I did before I worked at Omni. Yeah. <laughs> very cool. Well, uh, thank you for showing us so much yeah. of that. That's yeah. a, a real learning experience for me as well. Good. <laughs> um, and if uh, you know you're watching this later, you want to 
follow along. Uh, you can go to omnigraffle.com, download the free 15-day trial, um, both there and on the Mac App Store. We now offer trials through there. Um, and you can, yeah, at omnigraffle.com, it'll take you to the right place on our website where you can also go to get support information. You can download the entire manual, get all the information you need to test out OmniGraffle and see if it's right for you. And if you don't want to draw your own stencils, if that feels intimidating, uh, Stenciltown? Uh, Stenciltown.com, yes. yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can download stencils that other OmniGraffle users have built. There's lots of things for uh, doing software design or designing your patio or your garden. There's all sorts of cool stuff there um, yeah. that you can just drag in other people's art to get started. And that's also searchable through the stencils window in the app. So, um, and if there's any questions that we didn't get to today, um, you can send them to omnigraffle at omnigroup.com and our support humans will be happy to help you out. They're fantastic. <laughs> they certainly are. Well, thanks again, Andrew. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>